something that uh, they utilize in for sure but it's something down the line like I said it's going to be a bit of swings and roundabouts during the season because obviously there, there are going to be some tracks that aren't as quick as here and that's going to be one of the fascinating things about this GT1 World Championship in its first year there is the Nissan of uh, Jamie Campbell Walter the uh, Aston Martin will start uh, on the front they will dominate the front row of the grid and we're going to see I think uh, you know different cars more suited to different tracks and I think that's one of the great things about this championship it's kind of horses for courses this weekend it's the Aston Martins but the Nissans are also coming on strong and we're gonna have a word with uh, one of the uh, Nissan team members uh, in the pit lane in a moment as we watch uh, a quick uh, word there with with the Aston Martin but Nigel Stepney is uh, in the pit lane Three session, which certainly has surprised. There's a, a sort of tandem spin. I didn't see that earlier on for the Nissan and the Lamborghini, but it was, uh, you yeah, know, there's, there's a, a lot of competitors. It really is a competitive field here, Johnny, and we saw that in this first hour of qualifying here at Silverstone. Yeah, and it's very close as well. I think uh, the, the, the gaps are probably not quite as representative as we saw in Q3, because as I said before, it's going to be down to who used what tyres and when they used them and who's got what left for the race. So that again, that's going to be another twist and that's going to make the race really exciting. These sumo power Nissans were really uh, stunning, really considering the fact they have uh, very little development on those cars, but the Aston Martins and the Lamborghini is ultra competitive and having been out of the ballpark a couple of weeks ago, the Astons came back. There's a spin for Alfred Hager making his comeback to professional racing here in 2010 at the age of 50 something, as he says. Uh, but uh, the, his teammate, the Triple H Hedges Sport Cars, both running well this weekend. Bert Longin is making his debut with the team this weekend, showing strong as well. The uh, GT champions from the last several years, the Vitaphone Maseratis, they're always going to be fast. Yeah, I think they are. They are. But I think from a race point of view, that's where we're going to see the difference. And I think uh, it's something that uh, is going to be fascinating to watch. We, one thing we haven't seen thus far is the weather. It hasn't come into play. It's supposed to have rained. Still a blue sky with, with some. A bit cloudy, but... Yeah, some clouds around. It's a broken clouds. And uh, you know, we'll see what happens this afternoon. But uh, we, we saw a lot of excitement in that qualifying session. A brilliant effort by Darren Turner in the final moments. The time was ticking away. The uh, Lamborghinis were fast. Uh, in the early part of the session but he ended up at the bottom end of the top eight uh, for qualifying but they know they're going to be strong in the race because the Aston Martins there that was the X's car the sumo powers Peter Dumbrecht and Michael Krull they were fast as well I think we're in a, a room for a, a magnificent battle this afternoon Thomas Enger and Darren Turner will take the pole uh, my name is Jeremy Shaw with Johnny Herbert this afternoon we're going to be back for the race in a few hours later this afternoon join us there.